Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. That was all about the digestive system. Now let us look at the circulatory system. So just now we told that uh, the food is digested, then the digested food is absorbed and then it is transported to different parts of the body. So how the transportation actually happens? We, I said it happens through blood vessels. So how exactly it will happen, how the blood vessels will coordinate with each other that who will carry the food to which part of the body. So there we remember the circulatory system. So here we will talk about how the blood circulation takes place inside the body of earthworm. So they have a closed circulatory system. What do we mean by a closed circulatory system? That means blood here is confined to tube-like vessels and heart. I mean, you do not see blood just in the cavity, just like that. It, the blood is present only inside the blood vessels. Whereas in some organisms like um, the insects, blood is not present in blood vessels. It is simply present in the body cavity. And it is like the organs are uh, floating in the blood. It is something like that in case of open circulatory system. But in closed circulatory system, blood will always be confined in blood vessels. So the circulatory system here basically consists of heart and blood vessels. So what exactly are the part of circulatory system? So what is heart? Do we have an exact heart for earthworm? Heart is nothing but five pairs of aortic arches. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five. So these five pairs of aortic arches act as a heart. Heart is nothing but a pumping organ which can pump blood to blood vessels. We have a dorsal blood vessel which is very prominently seen on the dorsal side of the earthworm. I told you right, there is one blood vessel. Here also you can see that this red colored blood vessel. So it is pre present throughout the length of the earthworm and it can be seen very prominently on the dorsal side. Ventral blood vessel. So in a very similar way there is a blood vessel on the ventral side as well that is towards the belly side also. So basically these three things together form the circulatory system of the earthworm. Let us now look into the details of the circulatory system. As I said, the main components of the circulatory system of earthworm would be heart, dorsal blood vessel and ventral blood vessel. Now we will discuss each of these parts in little more detail, like what exactly they do. So let us start with heart. Heart here is not one particular organ. Instead, there are four pairs of aortic arches. So here you can see. One, two, three, four. We all know what is outer, right? Even in human heart, we have outer. So this is also kind of outer, but these five pairs. Now here you can see only five, but you are seeing it from one side. It is the lateral view. So on the other side, you have another five. So basically, there are five pairs of aortic arches found over the esophagus posterior to pharynx. So where is your pharynx? See, somewhere around here would be your mouth and after that will be pharynx. And then your esophagus starts, that is the food pipe, correct? So it lies above the esophagus just after the pharynx ends. As soon as pharynx ends and esophagus starts, at that point it lies. That is why they are often known as esophageal hearts. Heart, again, when you talk about the function, it is the pumping organ, the same function which it performs in human body. It pumps blood to the different blood vessels. Pumps blood from dorsal to ventral blood vessels. Now, what happens in this case basically is this dorsal blood vessel, that is the red one which you see here, that is the dorsal blood vessel. It brings blood to the heart. So this is the red one is the dorsal blood vessel and the orange one which you see below that is the ventral blood vessel. What happens is the dorsal blood vessel brings blood to the heart and then heart pumps that blood into the ventral blood vessel. So basically it pumps blood from dorsal to ventral blood vessels. Let us now talk about the dorsal blood vessel. 
Now, when you talk about earthworm, they do not have anything like lungs or gills. So, how will it absorb oxygen from the soil? Because normally in case of human beings, they have lungs. In case of aquatic animals like fishes, they have gills. But earthworm doesn't have either of them. So, how will they absorb oxygen from the soil? They do it with the help of their surface area, their body surface. So, suppose the body surface takes in that oxygen, then what happens to the oxygen? This oxygen which is absorbed by the body surface is taken by the dorsal blood vessel and it is passed to the heart. So basically which is this blood which is passing to the heart? That is oxygenated blood because the blood is rich in oxygen. Right? And then heart pump pumps this oxygenated blood into the ventral blood vessel. Now the dorsal in the dorsal blood vessel a paired valves is present to prevent the backflow of blood because the blood has to flow in the forward direction. Forward in the sense um, towards the head, towards the direction of heart. Right? So the dorsal blood vessel will carry blood in the upward direction or in the forward direction, whatever you call it. So basically it is the red prominent vessel running throughout the length of the earthworm on the dorsal side. As I told you before also, whenever you look at the dorsal side of the earthworm, the most prominent feature that you will see is the uh, dorsal blood vessel which is located at the middle on the dorsal side. It carries blood forward towards the heart. Now there should not be any backflow of heart backflow of blood and that is why a pair of valves are also present inside the dorsal blood vessel. Now let us look at ventral blood vessel. It is a blood vessel running throughout the length on the ventral side below the digestive tract. So your digestive tract is somewhere here. Can you see this? This is your digestive tract. Right? So this is your digestive tract. So below the digestive tract on the ventral side towards the side of the belly is located the ventral blood vessel. So it supplies blood to all parts of the body in need of oxygen. So now what hap what is so basically what is the cycle? The cycle is that this earthworm will absorb oxygen from the soil through its body surface. This oxygen will get into the dorsal blood vessel and the dorsal blood vessel will send it to the heart. So this oxygenated blood reaches the heart. Heart will pump this oxygenated blood into the ventral blood vessel and this ventral blood vessel, the purpose of this vessel is to carry the blood away from heart. So this vessel will take the blood this side and all the organs are located here maybe whether it is stomach whether it is intestine whether it is the excretory organs so everything is located this side so it will carry blood or it will supply blood to all different parts of the body whichever is in need of oxygen clear so th this is a simple flow of blood circulation in case of um, earthworm now one important point to note here is for dorsal blood vessel, it should always carry blood in the forward direction and to prevent backflow, valves are present. Valves present to prevent backflow of blood. Whereas in case of ventral blood vessel, ventral blood vessel should supply blood to all parts of the body, right? So that means it should carry blood both in forward and backward direction because even the parts like mouth and pharynx will also need blood. So here in this case, no valves present to prevent backflow so that the, so that the blood can flow in the backward direction. Right? So these three were the most important parts of the circulatory system. Besides these also, there are a multiple number of nerves present. There are many other small vessels which are present inside the body of earthworm. So we will not get into the details of each of those here, but at least a few points about some important things. So let us talk about some other blood vessels. Now there are smaller blood vessels to supply the alimentary canal that is the digestive tract and body walls. 
like the body walls of the earthworm. There is another vessel called subneural vessel. So what is this subneural blood vessel? This is the vessel that runs below the ventral nerve cord. So even below the ventral nerve cord, there is another vessel called subneural vessel and it carries blood rearward. So basically, we spoke about dorsal which carries forward, uh, ventral which carries backward. So who will carry it rearward? That is laterally, sideways. So this subneural vessel carry blood sideways. There is another vessel called commissural vessel. These blood vessels return blood from the body wall and nephridia to commissural vessels and hence to the dorsal vessel. Basically, the dorsal and the ventral vessels are connected by heart and commissural vessels. So if you see, this is your dorsal blood vessel, this is your ventral blood vessel. So one point of contact between dorsal and ventral blood vessel is the heart. Other than heart also, at certain points they are connected by eight pairs of commissural vessels so eight pairs of commissural vessels are found now ventral vessel gives off smaller branches as i said the, the function of the ventral vessel is to supply uh, oxygenated blood to different parts of the body now in order to supply it to so many different parts this vessel branches off to form smaller branches to supply the body wall and internal organs like nephridia or the alimentary canal so they are all sub branches of the ventral blood vessel right Okay, so this was all about the circulatory system of artwork. So now we will talk about, okay, one another thing which I would like to mention here is the blood glands. Since we have spoken so much about uh, blood vessels and heart and circulation of blood, so let us talk about blood glands as well. These are organs which are present on the fourth, fifth and sixth segments of the earthworm body and they produce blood cells and hemoglobin which is dissolved in blood plasma. So basically the blood which is flowing throughout the body of the earthworm. You might be curious to know who is producing the blood cells from where the blood cells are getting generated. So blood glands are responsible for the production of blood cells and hemoglobin which is dissolved in blood plasma. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.